Although news reports the United States and China are playing all kinds of intense conflicts from time to time. But they can't and mustn't wage hot wars. Can't and mustn't. Can't and mustn't. Can't and mustn't. But why? Why mustn't the United States and China wage hot wars? Ready? Go. Nuclear wars and human extinction risks. The explosion power of nuclear weapons is much bigger than that of your brain. Boom, boom. According to the United Nations, nuclear weapons are the most dangerous weapons on Earth. One can destroy a whole city, potentially killing millions, and jeopardizing the natural environment and the lives of future generations through its long-term catastrophic effects. According to experts in the International Red Cross, for last more than 70 years, those innocent victims in Japan who were affected from nuclear weapons were still suffering a serious, incurable side effects. The following scene for them is forever nightmare in their whole lives. In 1945, the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, Japan, containing about 140 pounds of high enriched uranium, released the energy equaling about 15 kilotons of chemical explosive. That blast immediately produced a strong shock wave, enormous amounts of heat, and lethal iodine radiation. Convective currents created by the explosion draw dust and other debris into the air, creating the mushroom-shaped cloud that has since become the virtual signature of nuclear explosion. In addition, radioactive debris was carried by wind. High into the atmosphere, later to settle to the Earth as radioactive fallout. The enormous toll of destruction, death, injury, and sickness produced by the explosion at Hiroshima and three days later at Nagasaki was on a scale never before produced by any single weapon. This extraordinary historical explosion shocked the whole world, ended the World War II. Meanwhile, delivered a significant warning to the whole world that no need another same catastrophe again. While the United States and China are two potential operators who own nuclear weapons today, in international relationship, the most powerful and effective strength which can ban this monster is not the United Nations, nor Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. Instead, a paradoxical fact is, several major powers have owned it simultaneously. Political scientists call this phenomenon game theory, which different major powers use nuclear deterrence strategies for world peace. So, for the countries which own nuclear weapons, mustn't wage hot wars with it. What if? It would not only be the third world war, but also it will be literally the six creatures extinctions on the earth after dinosaurs. Because besides dead bodies, water, crops, soil, air, all fundamental natural resources feeding and supporting humans will be profoundly polluted by nuclear. Even these pollutions can be irreversible, as all these fundamental elements flow in the whole ecosystem worldwide. Don't naively think it will none of your business. The whole world will be damaged, and all creatures in next generations would have no generations. Then no one would be capable of being responsible for this stupid self-destroy. So. Watch out, you United States and China! The trap of Thucydides trap. The relationship between the United States and China and the well-beings of the whole world rely on their policymakers and allies. But for now, a dangerous and unwise theoretical mindset trip 
has making a practical trap for them, especially those in the United States. Early in 2012, American political scientist Graham Allison proposed an academic hypothesis, Thucydides' trap, based on previous worlds in history, to describe an apparent tendency towards war when an emerging power threatened to displace an existing great power as a regional or international hegemon. Agitating a potential wars between the current the United States and China. Sadly, before other scholars fully argued, this hyper styled sensational concept and buzzwords have captured easily the public, even the policymakers on both sides, due to some media's work. However, how calm well beings in these two countries and the whole world can't only rely on some academic hypothesis, no matter how seemingly authoritative it is. In other words, how calm can our real life on every individual, which literally involves our body health, economic and financial stabilities, education sensibilities, families and the country's prosperities, all these very real things only are determined by just the one virtue and immature idea. If what happened in history must do the same at present, if we merely repeat what our ancestors do, what are we, the current beings alive for now, not our dead ancestors living here for? Based on historical human worlds, but if current generation only repeat what elder ones do, should we have lived in the Stone Age? How come our modern life have evolved into what it is today, since human appeared on the earth? Mm, you eat it? In modern history of international relations, it's not the very first time to see popular and similar authoritative theories failed to describe nor guide the reality. Early in the 1990s, in the face of the collapse of the Soviet Union, Samuel Huntington, another influential scholar from the Harvard University, argued in his landmark essay that after the Cold War, conflicts over cultural and religious identity will dominate global politics, and his book, the crash of civilization has made incredible impact in the academic field. But what reality is? The reality after the collapse of the Soviet Union is the birth of solo superpower of the United States, an existence at least for 20 years. Later, one of talented students of Samuel Huntington, Frank Fukuyama, proposed an opposite opinion, the end of history and the last man, saying the solo superpower of the United States will be the last power to conquer the world. Then, what reality is? The reality is, since last financial crisis, in 2007 and 2009, the United States has been declining. Especially until today, it has not fixed any core problems about its significant financial system, which will influence the whole globe. So, in retrospect, those influential academic theories are nothing but just a series in front of complicated and man-made reality. Clearly, what the world will lack be depends on what it is today. What it is today depends on us, who are literally living at the present, not those from the past. The real reason we study history is not to repeat what has been done, but to learn lessons from historical failures and to avoid numerous innocent blood and deaths in the past, to remind us that don't do stupid things again. So, for the United States and China, the most important thing is to avoid dropping to this trap, which is called the trap of Thucydides. Otherwise, we would be literally idiots who would naively sell ourselves to savvy arms dealers who should have dumbly destroyed all marvelous achievements in human civilizations, who would be the absolute historical sinners 
to future generations to come. So, watch out, you, the United States, and China. The J generation who were born in peaceful and convenient life probably have no idea that since World War II, the globe had taken about 30 years, at least two generations, to rebuild the daily life which you have got used to live. The sufficient agricultural food, clean water supplies, colorful clothes, dance and singing, sustainable schoolings, all basic commodities and life needs used to be imaginable treasures to your poor ancestors who unfortunately suffered warfare. Even during World War II, it is estimated at 50 to 56 million deaths worldwide. Even if we are suffering an expectable pandemic, millions of people are still working hard to make a living and paying taxes. They definitely deserve peace and love. So watch out, you, the United States and China. The world does need peace and love.